Hi everyone, welcome back to the Odin tutorial. Uh, today we're going to cover strings, outputs, and input in the console. So first, strings. So strings are basically a combination of a pointer to a U8 array and a length. Uh, so obviously you create a string like this. It's basically something like this. It's like a struct. Imagine like a struct with a, an, a pointer to a byte and then the length. It's basically what it is. It's more complicated than that, but it's a simplified version of what it actually is. Uh, normally they represent ASCII characters, but they can pre represent Unicode values. So you can do something like this. So generally you can just print the runes. Uh, if you just print it like this, it will print that. Uh, obviously if your console can actually print Unicode characters, mine generally can't, so it will print nonsense. So you can use a function like this to convert them from uh, let's say a string to a rune uh, slice, a slice of runes. So to convert them to runes, you use this function, which gives you a slice of runes. Because generally what the, what happens, it's a bit complicated how it works, but if you put uh, put runes into a string declaration, it will convert them to 8 bits and use UTF-8. Uh, but I'm not really an expert on how that works. It's basically like, it basically uses multiple 8-bit 8 8-bit uh, 8 values to represent 32 bits. So there are lots of inbuilt functions for strings and you have to import core, uh, colon strings to use them. So strings.compare will compare two strings and it will return an inter integer. Uh, if the integer is zero, it's the same size. If it's above zero, then it will be the first string is bigger by that amount. And if it's below zero, it's smaller by that amount. So there's a concatenate function, which will join two strings together. However, this will actually, uh, this forces me to tell you what multiple return times are. So you can basically have multiple return times in, uh, in Odin. I think I'll show you this uh, maybe in post, how the function actually works and how to return different... Uh, I'll do a future video on multiple return times. But basically what this does is instead of like an error union like in Zig, it basically uses multiple return types and it uses it returns an integer as an error, if there could be an error. Uh, so the combination is basically the return string and the, the second value is the integer, which could be a value, it could be an error, sorry. And in this situation, uh, so first of all, we are actually allocating on the heap. So we need to call defer delete on combined because it's basically a string is a pointer and it's pointing to heap memory. So we need to delete it. Otherwise you'll get a memory leak uh, just because maybe we don't, you don't actually know the size of the string combined. So maybe you have a heap string plus a stack string and maybe it's too big to put on the stack. So basically it just, uh, it will allocate on the heap by default, so you need to delete it. Then we have to have this thing, if uh, concat not equals nil, which basically means if there was an error. Because we are allocating on the heap, there could be a, 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 an error allocating, so we need to check that. Of course, you can ignore it. There's no, f You're not forced to actually do anything, but you should probably check. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure if there's a standard way, because sometimes it's optional, sometimes it's zero. So sometimes if there's no errors, you say not equals zero. Sometimes you say not equals nil. I'm not sure exactly why that is, but sometimes it's zero, sometimes it's nil. Not, I think it depends on the function. Uh, there's an upper. Again, the upper will allocate on the heap because you don't know how big the uh, string is uh, and you have to delete it. That's yeah, just printing the uh, the upper, upper message. So making it lowercase is just too lower. And again, you need to delete that. I was making a smaller string, basically a substring. It uses the cut function. Uh, this will give you is an exam if you put this as an example into it. With this, basically, what you do is you have the string, you have the first index, and then you have the end index. And we have an error. Oh, sorry, we delete it first, and then we have the error that could happen. And then contains will basically give you a bool if it contains it or not, and you put in two strings. So console output now. Uh, the most basic print functions are basically just print and print line, uh, which is pretty simple. You can put any variable in it. You can put you know, anything you want in it. If you want more advanced printing, you basically need to use printf or printf line. So something like this, fmt.printf. And it basically looks like C, honestly. And you need to use these codes, like D is integer and float, I is integer, C is characters or runes, um, which basically bytes, not characters, but S is for string, F is for floats, and you could put points for the amount of decimal places you want for floats. 
All right, here we get to the examples. The example got a bit out of hand, honestly. <laughs> uh, I wanted to just think, I was just thinking of how uh, could I make this like a good example to show strings. And I basically thought of, let's make a calculator where you type in the numbers. I'll just show you what this does. So I would run, basically simple calculator. You can do, um, I'm gonna hit the microphone because I'm an idiot. So it just says simple calculator. You can question mark for help and it shows these commands. Uh, but say you just put an equation in, so 2 plus 2, 4, uh, 2 plus, I don't know, minus 5, it's minus 1, basically like this. Uh, that's what I'm creating here. It's quite a lot more complicated than you think, actually, because you've got a lot of edge cases. So first we create a console loop. Uh, we just print these, and then uh, we have 4, which is just, it's just a while loop, basically. 4 is just a, another while loop that goes forever until you break it. And it breaks until you type in quit, basically. Um, so here we're getting console input. And to get console input, um, it's a bit weird. So first at the top, we need to have core colon OS because we're using the OS to do this. And then we have this thing, OS read, which I'll go to here. So what this takes in, uh, read takes in a handle, which I'm not sure how this works. I basically just uh, put OS, os.std in. I don't really know what that does, to be honest. You have the uh, you have the bytes. So what you basically need to put in a slice of bytes. So here we put in a slice of bytes called buffer, and it's basically to the end. So this basically means it's so we have an array here this is an array and then we put in a slice so this creates a slice all the way to the end um, we go back to where we were and then this returns an integer and an air number and an air number is basically just another integer so what this basically means is air none error none is zero I believe it's zero so you can you can find these at least um, or I don't know. Basically, you want to just type if not equals zero. That's basically what you want to detect if there's an error. And if there is an error, I just print and print the error. Um, and then number of bytes is basically the amount size. And then we convert it to a string like this, doing like colon number bytes, because the bytes will be the amount of characters, basically, because a byte, one byte is one character. And that's basically how we get input. That's a standard way to get input in the console. Uh, it's a bit long-winded, but you know, it's not exactly like uh, input like in Python. But uh, to be safer, you need to you know write more. And then we have process command, which basically we, we get the command from the user. We need to process it. So we go process command down to here. Uh, yeah, I was just doing that for testing, basically. So first I trim the space. It's a bit, I kind of got uh, weird errors if I just didn't trim any spaces. So uh, it wouldn't recognize quit or quit with a capital or question mark. So I just, just trim this and then see if that equals those. If it does that, then I return true, which will break. So if should quit is true, then we break. So we break the loop and then quit the program. Otherwise we return false in every other situation. So if it's question mark, we just print this and then return. If the length is too small, so basically if it's length you know, less than three, it's not a valid command. So I just could return false. Then I process equation. So I go to here, process equation, close everything here. So here we have multiple return types. So first number operator and second number. Uh, so what this basically is, is this is an integer, this is an operator enum, and this is an integer. So an enum at the top, I have an operator here. Basically we need to know if it's an add, subtract, multiply, divide, or none. And I've just created an enum, which you do like this. And you access an enum, so we go operator dot, add that's basically how you just like with a dot that's how you use enums um, and basically this will return those so I go to generate equation lots of functions just because it was very big it's, it's, it's a lot of code this just for a simple example <laughs> but anyway right, so here we have fields uh, which basically will separate by every space so it will look for a space and then separate it and give you a slice uh, or I guess it, I guess it gives you an array. I think it gives you an array. Yeah, it gives you no, it gives you a slice of strings. So it's basically a string, a string, a string. So it's it's multiple strings is what it will give you, and it could give you an allocation error because it doesn't know because it's giving you a slice of strings. It has to allocate. So we check if it's not nil. If it is nil, we print the error, uh, and then we return basically nonsense. So the way multiple return types work is. 
Here we're returning an int operator int, and we put it in brackets with commas, separate them. And then when we return, we just put a comma in between them and then put a semicolon at the end. Well, you don't need a semicolon, but you can if I always do. Um, basically, that's how multiple return types work. At the end, I'm doing this. So first I create either phase to see which phase I'm on, because it's basically first number, operator, second number. That's what I'm doing. Uh, I look for the, f I just set them as not a number, not a number, and none. So they're invalid at first. And then we go through each command. So we've separated the commands. To basically say you've you put in two plus two, you should have two, nothing. It should be separated basically by two plus two, and they're separate strings. So I'm going through each command. If the phase is the first phase, then we basically pass the int. And I couldn't find pass int anywhere in Odin, and I couldn't be bothered to look for it for like you know an hour. So I just wrote it myself. So I just wrote a pass int function myself. So just a quick uh, update pass into is actually an FMT, I should probably have looked there. Uh, and it basically takes in a string and an offset from that string. Uh, here we wouldn't need an offset and returns an integer and a new offset, which you can use if you don't, if you want. Uh, it's supposed to look for multiple things and you have a bool OK. So if you want to detect errors here, you'd, if OK not equals true, then you would do some print some error message or something like that. Uh, so we start with a total, which we were going to return the total at the end. Uh, then we get the length of the string, and we use the length of the string to work out the multiplier. And what we're basically doing is, say for example we have four digits, well the fourth digit you need to time by a thousand. So if you find four, times four by a thousand, four thousand. It's basically just work, and you, did you um, in this I, uh, where is it, yeah here, I divide it by ten each time. So four uh, by a thousand, so it says four digits, a thousand, hundred, ten, one. Basically how it works. So I get the initial multiplier by the length. And then I um, say, yeah, is it a first? So I want us to check if there's a minus number or not. So I have an is first check. So if it's first, and then if the letter is a minus, then I um, divide it by 10 again, and then change it to minus. And that's basically it. That's the only reason why I'm using is first at all. Then I find the digit, which basically just goes through the digits and returns the number. Uh, and that's basically it. So I first I find the digit. If it's not a number, then I return not a number because it's not valid. Uh, and then basically I return the total. No, sorry, I uh, I add to the total here. Digit times the multiplier. So say if you find four and then multiplies a thousand, you time you add four thousand to the total. And then you just return the total. And then that's basically it. Um, so I do this with this one. Then I get the operator, which is again just looking for the operator. And if it's invalid, you return none. And I also have it with an X, just in case you want to use X for multiply. Uh, then I do the same passing into the second number, and then I just break and then return the numbers. So we've passed the int. Yeah, so basically, yeah, if, if it's not a valid number, we say invalid first number, invalid just checks. And then we switch on the operator. So if it's add, I mean, in theory, I could just put equals. Maybe it's better to do that. I don't know, equals. All right, so yeah, I just quickly changed it. Um, before it was basically printing the exact same thing you put into the function before into the actual uh, thing so i yeah so i quickly just change it so that it will do this two plus two equals it just puts equals four now it's a lot better than before um anyway so here i basically uh it could be a minus number if you multiply or not a minus but a decimal number so i basically change it to a float and then print a float instead so say for example you do something like say nine multiply by two, it will give you 4.5, the decimal number. So it does do decimal numbers, but you can't type in a decimal number. I didn't pre pass a float. Anyway, it's, it's a bit of a complicated example. All right, so we generate the equation, and then we just print it here, and that's it. And then we return false, because it's obviously, I didn't put the quit fun quit uh, command in. And that's basically it. Uh, that's um, quite a complicated example of how to pass an int, <laughs> how to get a uh, Command a command input. How to make a console loop. Uh, how to print using printf uh, like this. Also, I'm casting here, which I'm showing you casting. Lots of good examples here. Um, I also did some testing just to see if it works because you should always test. There are there is inbuilt testing in Odin. I just couldn't be bothered to use it. Uh, it's easier just to call a function in this situation. All right, yeah. One plus one is two. Two minus one is one. Three times nine, four to nine, and then invalid 
invalid first number because I had put two minuses. Uh, that's valid, that's invalid. Uh, and that's so it's basically, yeah, just made a test just to see if it works, obviously, because I was making my own pass int function. Uh, but that's basically it, yeah. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you guys next time.